what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we are back in finland i know it's been a minute finland i need to check out more and add some videos to the playlist but we got 10 weird things that are normal in finland finland from my guy alexi himself uh videos about finland checking this out see what it's about y'all make sure y'all subscribe to my guy alexi um I think I'm done, and I get recommended a lot of his videos, so check out a, a lot of Finn stuff, things about Finland, so um, 10 weird things, gonna be very interesting to see what's normal here in Finland, so y'all hit that subscribe button, let's check it out. What the f*** is this, <laughs> Finland? <laughs> if you're planning to visit or even move to Finland, there will be a number of things that will make you go WTF. And in this video, I'm going to explain 10 of them to you. Let's go check it out. Hey, are you ready to go to sauna? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, time to get naked. <laughs> Dude, you're completely naked. Yeah, of course I am. How so? What the f <laughs> Hey, I've been knowing that. That's something I've been Because knowing. Finnish people are actually quite content of being naked. And as you probably might know, sauna culture and sauna is almost holy for Finns. And you either go naked or at least with sim swimwear if you go to a public sauna. If you're a little bit concerned about having your first sauna experiences, don't worry because sauna is nothing sexual, but it's meant for relaxing. Also, for, for example, sure, if you go sure. to the public swimming pools and in the dressing and the shower rooms, you will go there with so if you're a guy, you will go with other naked guys, or if you're a lady, you will go with <laughs> other naked ladies in the sauna and shower rooms. This next one can be See, kind of crazy. It happens because I remember when going to this one spa place in Dallas, and there were people like they had they had a naked area you could go to, like, but it's just to relax. It's just to relax, you know. I understand that now, but I. I don't know how I feel about that still, you know, because I have an experience, you know, maybe some trunks. This, this has happened to me as well. So when I was in the public swimming pool, I was taking the shower with other naked dude. This cleaning woman <laughs> came to the shower room, so she just started to clean like blah, blah, blah. And that's how it works. So, <laughs> so they cannot really tell to the cleaning people if they can go to the guys or girls section to clean mm -hmm. so this can definitely happen mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that just keep your cool For if sure. that happens yeah. to you but brace yourself <laughs> you said brace yourself okay not at the casino in no slots <laughs> So Finland is one of the rare countries where it's actually possible to gamble in public places like grocery stores, supermarkets, gas stations okay. and so on. Because we have like tons of these oh, gambling snap. machines available. And these machines are operated by the state. Hey, granny granny in the seat trying to get a kind of trying to catch a break of that. Now we have maybe one or two. I know for sure I've seen two in my town of uh, gas stations. They have some different games too you can win from. But I mean, we sell lottery tickets. I'm sure y'all sell lottery tickets in Finland, but we have lottery tickets all the time. So they even have machines. You can just buy them from the machine and get a scratch off lottery ticket. Run Vegas organization. And if you're wondering, the money will actually go to a good cause. And Vegas has made oh. this really nice breakdown where the money actually goes. So let me read it out to you. The places where the money goes to include social and health organizations, science, mm. sports, culture and art, war veterans, youth, and so on. The total money is around 1 okay. billion euro. That's a lot of money. And as that you can is. see, this is all gone to a good cause. But the interesting fact that all of this money comes from gambling. So people actually <laughs> lose money and the lost money is put for good cause. Because the gambling is so, so much good. available, it has caused gambling addiction, addiction problems for people. And Facts. according to THL, which is kind of the health organization in Finland, they made a survey in 2019 and around 3% of Finns, that, that's around 112,000 Finns, have Dang. a gambling problem. And from this saying. group, around half have a gambling addiction. So that's around 52. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. If once you, when you win, you just like that feeling. I feel like that's in everything. You start winning, you just gotta keep doing it again type of thing. And that's what I feel with gambling. When you win big, you just like, let me try my luck. But that's good that all the money is going towards something. Cause like I said, we got lottery tickets. We got all the, 
I'm sure y'all seen here in the state, we have the Mega Millions or whatever. Um, they had one time it reached almost a billion, I think. It was, well, it was, it was some hundreds of millions, and somebody finally won it. But I'm just like, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but you don't know where the money going to here. For sure. Zero. People usually who usually play this are people who are not doing so well, at least according Facts. to what I've heard. And their money that they lose are put to good cause like youth and sports and science and blah blah blah. This is kind of like a reverse Robin Hood action. So Veikkaus organization has been actually under pressure quite a bit. And for example, starting yesterday, so today is 13th of January when I'm filming this video, 12th of January, you need a strong authentication to play the games. I remember when I was younger, the problem is that underage people were playing these because oh, you have yeah. to be at least 18. So now they have made it so that you need an account which is created on the mobile app to be able to play. And mm. I think it's a good good change. How is gambling in your country? Let me know in the comments below. I'd yeah, love to hear. There's so many uh, uh there's so many ways to gamble but I see certain things differently because, you know, they even got the sports. They got the sports stuff, too. You can, you know, guess the numbers, how many points you think this person going to score, how many home runs you think. So in many ways, it's different. But like I said, I've been to a casino, not in Texas, but in Oklahoma. That's our closest one. People would be there on that same machine for hours. Like, I've seen people cash out 10K, 20K dollars just in a casino. So, you you wish it was you. You wish it was you for sure, especially hitting that big. But what happens? They win this big money and they go back. They go back and spend it all trying to hit bigger. It's a real addiction out here, I can say. It's real. People never use cash. But depending where you come from, this might catch you off guard. Because Finland is a country where people operate heavily on debit and credit cards. People never use cash. I've even seen restaurant lines, like these lunch restaurant lines, when there's even one line that which doesn't accept other than cards. And I believe that's just to make things to go smoothly because when yeah. you have to do with the cash, you have to put the change and blah, blah, blah. Lots of hassle. As for me, I never use cash in Finland. But you, what is still never... advisable is to have some spare cash in your wallet like 20 euros or something because maybe the card system will fail yeah. sometime and then the cards won't work and then everyone's screwed. So it's good to have <laughs> a little bit of cash in your pocket. For example, what is very awesome, in, if you go to a restaurant with your buddies, you buy what you buy and at the end, if you want to split the cost between everyone, you can just say like, okay, we play separately, split, okay. everyone pays their own and then the restaurant person brings four bills and you can each pay with your own card and you, you okay, can split payments yeah, with card and that's amazing because i've been in some countries like japan where you have to put cash and they are like count like who, who paid what it's just a hassle but it's like boom just yeah, put the card nice. and everything's good hey i will be participating in the wife carrying world championships this year you're oh, participating yeah, the, the what the wife carrying is a finnish sports didn't you know that <laughs> holy <laughs> <sh> <laughs> In Finland, we actually have lots of bizarre sports and I've gathered a few of them into this video. And I also want to say that the these sports you definitely don't see in everyday lives. I've never participated in these sports myself, at least not <laughs> yet, but we have, for example, the wife carrying world championship where you carry your hey, wife or... I think that's the one I've seen. That looked like the video I've seen. May not be, may not. Be. I think this was probably the most interesting sport, but it looked fun, it looked fun. I guess it's any woman. And you have Pretty to complete cool. this obstacle course. course oh, well, yeah, almost as as you can. <laughs> Then there's boot throwing world championships. You have to throw a boot as far as you can. I didn't there's see that one. The floor boot. ball, where you play floor ball on a lake. That one. Holy shit. There's swamp football world championships. Swamp. Oh, you play my football goodness. Swamp. Holy shit. That's going to be some tough, tough spots. Air guitar world champ. Okay, those last three I, I haven't seen. I've seen the wife carrying. Boot throwing. That must be a heavy rubber boot. Play football they were and swamp. Holy shit, that's gonna be some tough, swamp. tough spots. Look how deep that is. Guitar World Championships. Wow, that's just amazing. Like and quicksand. the <laughs> most interesting one is the naked 
10 kilometer run. This is also organized annually. <laughs> oh, I, would like to go I haven't one. seen this or Should heard about this one either. Hey, I'm gonna get a few beers from the store. Do you want some? Dude, you cannot get them anymore. It's already past nine. What do you mean I can? And what do you mean by past nine? In Finland, you cannot buy alcohol after nine. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Finland is definitely one of the countries where the alcohol behavior is somewhat, well, you know. Yet at the <laughs> same time, there's a number of restrictions in terms of booze and alcohol. One of them is that you cannot buy any alcohol products from grocery stores and supermarkets between mm. 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. So if you're going to a home party in the evening, make sure to stock on some booze because if you go too after late to the shopping nine, market, it. like after nine, to the grocery store to buy some longer, for example, they won't sell it to you. And there's nothing to Man. do. I guess the cash, the point of sale system, the cash register systems are configured so that they won't let you wow. kind of scan any boost products after nine. Mm. Uh. <laughs> you can also see the alcohol sections being closed <laughs> or locked completely, so you cannot even get them there. To add Insult wow. to injury, the Alco stores, which are the state-run liquor stores, which sell kind of the stronger shit, they are also open <laughs> until 21 or 9 p.m. in the weekdays. And on Saturdays, they usually close, uh, I think, around 6. So that's very early. Oh, that's so if you want to get like wine or some stronger like mint or gorsen or whatever, you have to go early. You have to go early because you might be left out like, Haha, I miss my booze. <laughs> <laughs> So, make sure to get your booze in advance. Did you know that if you make just one phone call to the tax office, you can find out how much I make money? What? Really? Is that huh? even legal? Of course it is. All tax info is public in Finland. Man, this country is so weird. <laughs> tax information. In Did you know that public? anyone can find out how much someone else who works and pays taxes in Finland makes money? That's right. Because wow. all the tax information in Finland is public. In practical terms, this means that, for example, I can call how much my neighbor, my best friend, my girlfriend, my boss, my peers at work, how much they make money. With one phone call, it takes literally two minutes. I have made a video about this where actually I actually did the phone call. You can check it out later. But it I need to check that out. I know here, I want to say you can see businesses. You can see how much they've gotten, like, with certain loans or something like that for for their businesses. I I think I forgot where I seen it at. But you can see who especially we had this thing called the PPP loan. You can see who requested and got a PPP loan for their business. You know, but I don't think it have I don't think we can find like just our public tax information. I think you have to have for us, you have to have like certain information, like your social and all that mess. That's how you could probably see somebody information. But that's interesting. I'm going to have to check that video it's out. It's pretty bizarre, but it's true. And each November, the tax office sends a list of people who have earned more than 100,000 euro to the media. And the media oh, wow. makes lots of articles who were the top sportsmen, who were the top YouTubers, who were the top earners all together. Okay, Some now people I've seen the top to, earners. <laughs> call this tax poor. <laughs> the media is making money when they get these clicks and make these articles. Now, you might be thinking, like, what, why, why the hell is this system in place? Is there any pros? Well, there's actually lots of pros. First of all, it provides transparency. So we can mm. see that no one is getting okay. corrupt or there's no corruption. And you can actually see, like, what is the price okay. level? For example, if you start in a new job, you can find out how much your peers make money so that you are not underpaid or overpaid. Oh, yeah. And it also gives some good that impact for the lot, yeah. political and societal conversations and discussions. But I guess one of the cons is definitely that it increases more jealousy because Finns are kind of jealous people already and people who make money, they just make more money and the people who don't make money, they're like, oh fuck, like, oh, why do we always have to read this article? <laughs> hey man, why there's so many Swedish around here in Helsinki? Because Swedish is still the second official language here in Finland. Really? Does it mean that you also have to start Study Swedish in school? That's right. Holy shit, and I thought Finnish was hard, but now I have to learn Swedish. Finnish too. is hard. Swedish all over. Well, Finland used to belong to Sweden back in the days, and we can still see the effects up even today because Swedish is still the second official language in here. <laughs> what is kind of in interesting that, especially here in Helsinki, the areas of the city have also a Swedish name, and also the bus stops have a Swedish name, and mm. also the street signs 
or the streets have a Swedish name. I know somebody added a video to the playlist that I checked out. I think certain city in Finland, I think more northern of Finland, that they 80% speak or spoke Swedish. Uh, of course, they speak Finnish, but like 80%. That's a high percent, 80%. Of everybody there that speaks Swedish, so that's pretty so cool. So, for example, Sörnäinen is Sörnäes. Tapiola is Hagalund. Lauttasar is Drumsö. Keilaniemi, Tsegelunden. Everything has a Swedish name here. There might be some case where this might mess you up. For example, I always use Google Maps when I'm looking at the public transportation routes. And sometimes my Google Maps shows me the Swedish names of the bus stops or the train stops. Uh -huh. And that kind of confused me because, like, <laughs> ho hold on, what was the Finnish name again? Hey, it's my first day at the job tomorrow. Is there any pro tips I should know when working in Finland? Yeah, just take it easy. Finnish working culture is quite laid back. And remember that you don't have to address your boss with the last name or use any titles. Just use the first name, it'll be good. And I thought I've already seen everything. <laughs> don't in Finnish experience. working culture, we don't call each other like Mr. Lightning or Mr. Pekkanen or whatever. We always use people's first name. It doesn't matter if it's a client or your boss or your superior or your peer or whatever. I personally work in B2B sales, so I meet clients almost on a daily basis and I always greet the clients with their first name. Yeah. So it's very flat hierarchy and I think it's a really good thing because if we would have to call like Mr. and blah blah blah, it's just, it would be really stiff and it, it wouldn't fit to the thing. Yeah. I think here did you just you just used to doing that here. I know uh for the most part if someone has their doctrine's degree you call them doctor. And most of the time they prefer that get in. you know um I don't know how it works in Europe but here in the states what you get your you can get your associates, bachelors, masters, then doctrines I believe. So you're in school for a while so they're like, call me doctor. Even if they're not a doctor, doctor, hospital, doctor. You know, you just got the doctrine degree. This working environment at all. And again, if you plan to come to study in Finland, you you meet your professor, your teachers, you can also call them with the first name. You don't have to show Mr. or Mrs. Mm -hmm. Just leave that out. How is it in your culture? Let me know. Thanks yeah, for not driving over me. This is a very funny thing. When you are crossing a crossroad, you know, the zebra walkway with the white stripes on the ground, you're waiting there, you see a car coming, and if the car mm. stops and lets you walk, lets you go you across, you might see people like doing like this, like, hey, thanks for letting me cross. But sometimes Finnish people are like, hey, thanks for not driving over me. Uh -huh. This can be a little bit surprising. And I think it just tells like how respectful Finns are. When you're driving a car, they see a pedestrian, okay, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah. Amazing. But I think the traffic culture in Finland is awesome. Like there's no road rages or like people don't really drive that's, crazy. That's a good thing. <laughs> people actually obey the traffic rules. And that also brings another added layer of safety to finish uh, to life in Finland in my opinion. Tabloid lock system. This abloy lock system is pretty dominant in Finland, so most of the regular doors have an abloy lock system. The you have to be careful. Orders. If you don't know how, it, how to use it, you might lock yourself out. So let me teach you how it works. So you see this knob, when you push it up and close the door, the door will lock and you cannot open the door uh -huh. outside unless you have the key. If you put the knob down, the door won't lock and you can just pull down the handle to open the door. Essentially, this mm, means that you don't need your key to lock the door. So if you leave your place, make always sure you have your keys with you before you close the door because if you don't, you will lock yourself out if the knob is up. So that can definitely cause some problems yeah, and calling the company different. to open the door can be quite expensive, up to 50 euros. So make sure that, Ooh. make sure that you know, make sure that, oh fuck this doesn't work. <laughs> and if you want don't to understand the Finnish people and the culture better, learning the language is the key and you can get my free quick start guide for Finnish language by joining my email list links in the description make sure to subscribe to get more videos okay yeah the the interesting sport and i thought i seen them all i, I really did i thought i seen them all but he showed three more that that are very very interesting but this is a good video this is a good video very funny but yeah the tax information thing that's different uh the gambling and uh i 
mind you, it's different here, state to state in America. That's one thing I can say. Sometimes some people can't gamble per state and some people can't earn more per state. So, uh, yeah, gambling, gambling is a little different around here. Very different. But other than that, I enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to my guy, El Siki, uh, himself, Elisky, <laughs> Elisky. I said El Siki. I'm thinking of what's that movie? Money Heist. I'm thinking of Money Heist. I think there was a guy named Helsinki in there. But Alexi. <laughs> That's funny I said that. I said Helsinki. But other than that, y'all let me know. There are some more weird things that are normal in Finland other than here. Uh, yeah, most of the things that he talked about, like I said, with the gambling, I, I think it just varies state to state. Uh, The Mr. and Mrs. thing, we... I don't know. It's, it's it's that's normal here. That's normal here in the states. So, but other than that, that's all I have. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Hey, add some videos to the playlist. I'll, I'll put the link in the description this time because I haven't put the link in the description. So that's why I haven't been getting many. But other than that, y'all be blessed. Be the best and be. I'm out.